take time to be holy. Speak off with thy love. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitted for service aboard. You have brought us here to pray. And we're going to spend three days in your presence as the leaders of your people. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. To seek your blessing for humanity. Your grace for this movement. I'm asking you will be with us. Amen. You will lead us in our prayers. Amen. Holy Spirit will strengthen us. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. We want, before we go into our prayer session, we want to consider this exhortation, the duty of prayer. The duty of prayer. In the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 7 to verse 11, the Bible says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him. We are talking about the duty of prayer. The Lord here unveils to us our duty as long as we want good things from him. And we want good things for, from him for others. If we do so, then we must engage ourselves in the duty of prayer by asking, seeking from him, knocking at the door, even when the circumstances look hard. The Bible says, in the case of hard circumstance, prayer and fasting brings solution in the book of Matthew verse I mean, Matthew chapter 17 verse 20 and 21 and Jesus said unto them because of your unbelief for verily I say unto you if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed ye shall say unto this mountain remove hands to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you how be it 
This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So, you can see here, talking yet more about the challenges of life. The Lord is saying, our faith in him, our faith in him, and prayer to our God will bring solution. But some cases are difficult, they are hard. Some circumstances are difficult and hard. In such cases, we go before him in fasting. We saw it uh, in, among the Jews when Esther declared three days fasting and prayer. Fast for me. This circumstance is hard. But fast for me. And uh, I will go and see the king. And it worked for them. So that's what God is revealing to us. There are many good things God has for you as a person. Has for me as an individual. Many good things that the Lord has for the world. Has for our brothers and sisters. Has for our neighbors. If we are concerned. If we love ourselves and love one another. If we have love for sinners. We will go before the Lord in prayer. So the Lord will want us to be a blessing to others. But we should pray. Pray the duty of prayer. Look at it in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 33. I mean Ezekiel chapter 36. I read verse 37. Ezekiel 36 verse 37. Thus saith the Lord God. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like flock, like a flock. I will yet for this, can you see? For these good things for the house of Israel. These good things for the kings of Israel. These good things for the people of Israel. I will yet be inquired of. The duty of prayer. I will yet be inquired of. Don't expect things to be working automatically. Don't. Expect things to be working in your life automatically. Now, I want you to understand some things this way. That God gave a particular person something to keep. And told that person, any time you come to ask, he should release it for you. If you do not ask, he should still keep it for himself, for him. That's it. I said the Lord told the angels. Now, here are these blessings. As you go to that worship service, you go to that man's house, you go to that woman's house, as you enter that church, have all these blessings. All those people that open their mouth and pray, asking, see what, hear what they are asking and be releasing this thing to them. To those that ask, the information has been given to the angels already. Now, in case you sit down, I say you are thinking it in your heart. Angels don't know what you think in your heart. So, the blessings remain in their hands. They don't know what you are thinking. The blessings remain in their hands. It's as you open your mouth and pray, Oh God, yes, they come closer. What are you saying? What are you asking? Then, oh, you are asking for this? Get it. For the Lord has told us that whatever you ask, we should release the answer. The answers are in our hands. The matter is no more with God. He has released answers. They are in our hands. We are your supervisors. Looking for what you will ask. Then again, the angels are given spears and arrows. They are given I mean, weapons of spiritual warfare. To release against the demons standing by. 
to release against the forces that are been fighting you the angels know where they are and the lord says hold these weapons whoever you see binding the devil go and bind him whoever you hear binding the devil go and get that demon bound whoever you hear throwing fire against forces of darkness release the fire upon them whoever you hear trampling upon forces go and trample upon those forces this i speak by imagination someone said angels were asked someone spoke by divine revelation he said the angels sat on top of the mountain um, of uh, the walls of jericho the lord had released angels there and given them instruction when you hear israel shouting and moving around the mountain the wall be silent at the seventh round as they shout on the seventh round, pull down the wall. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it means uh, they, they really, I mean, the answer to prayer is directly re related to your duty of prayer. That's why we say the duty of prayer. But what if you really have some problem and you keep quiet? You really have some things to contain. People are praying and you just keep quiet. Say, you're thinking it in your heart. Angels don't know what you're thinking. Do they know what you're thinking? So they don't take action. So I'm telling you this in some to make you understand the value of prayer. Not that God in some circumstances will not hear us even when we think our prayer. Because the Bible says it shall come to pass that even before the prayer I shall answer. Even as you are thinking it in your heart. But that's in the circumstance. Not in all the circumstance. So that you, when people are praying, you are quiet. What, what I'm doing, I'm praying. Jesus didn't pray like that. If he did, they would have never written down the weights of his prayers. If he was the thinking type that they are praying you think you are just thinking you are not saying out your words then jesus prayers would have not been written down the disciples couldn't have come to him to him and said teach us to pray nothing would have inspired them if the, jesus was a silent prayer a person who prays in silence it means we have come here as for duty and that means you can be silent duty duty talking about this duty now let me tell you more about this duty in the book of Colossians Colossians chapter 4 I read Colossians chapter 4 verse 12 go there and read after me Colossians chapter 12 of chapter 4 verse 12 are you there yes. one to go Epaphras who is one of you a servant of Christ saluted you always laboring fervently for you in prayers that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God duty of prayer Epaphras who is one of you what is he doing he's greeting you he is always laboring not just laboring laboring fervently laboring fervently in what in prayers for you who will just open your mouth is this a fervent is it laboring uh, is this person laboring <laughs> i'm telling you that's why you're, you're not laboring laboring it means if preference is praying you will see the body vibrate that was the prayer that gave Hannah answer to her child answer to prayer giving her her child because Hannah for she prayed her voice was not hard but her lips were moved to the point that Eli said 
How long will you be drunk here with alcohol? Laboring. Labor. Laboring. The body was vibrating. Although it is being praying silently, you see the consecration, concentration, the shaking. You know that something is going on. Engine is working. The place must shake around. The body of the machine must shake. It's laboring. It's working. More than just laboring. Fervently. So I'm telling you this because you are the type that you may pray if a fly lands on your body, the fly will not feel that any, any action is taking place. You pray, the fly feels convenient to be on your body because you will not be moved. Nothing touches you. You are moving slow and steady. Let's be going. Nothing shakes you. Labor labor fervently so let's see you praying let's see you doing something <laughs> if all these haram people if all okay, just take an, a soldier who is who is in a war environment if he's walking is he going to be walking carefully like care, just gently he's gone cock good good the way he's going this man is ready for action so pray like that you are ready for action. You have come here for action. Labor. Thank God for your righteousness. I appreciate your righteousness. Thank God that you are not committing sin. I appreciate your holiness. But then, to make your holiness a blessing to others, you need to add fervent prayer to it. To make your holiness consistent, you need to add fervent prayers to it. In the book of James chapter 5. James chapter 5. I read verse 15 to verse 18. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. That's what? A valid much. You are casting out demons. In, that's why some of you don't know. You can't cast out demons because your prayer level has not reached that level. Because I will look at demons and say, you devil, I say in Jesus' name, leave that place. Eh? You are talking to who? <laughs> you are talking to who? Devil. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. A valid match. Add prayer to your righteousness to make you useful. Add effectual prayers to your righteousness to make you a blessing to others to make you a resultful Christian M make you the one that heals people no more than that add fervent prayers to your Christian life please practice fervency here practice fervency in your private prayers that's where sleep takes you away. And you don't know that every day you do not pray well is a minus in your life. Every day you do not pray well is a minus. Because it, your, your, the strength you have is foil. And foil gets consumed with activities. Foil gets consumed with distance. Every distance you take without in your car, in your motorcycle, in whichever way foil is burning. If you don't re think of replacing that foil constantly, your journey will stop on the way. That's it. Your Christian life and Christian ministry, how much more? You have a heavy load. You are carrying. You are carrying the load of it, the church, the load of other people. You are carrying heavy load and no prayer. You will soon be packed up. It, you, you will start making noise. It's like a vehicle that is carrying heavy load at the boat and the shock observer is not strong. It will be making... It will be hitting on the ground. 
and it will affect that vehicle. You are hitting on the ground already. You are carrying heavy load, heavy ministry, no prayer. Add prayer to your Christian calling. Now, I will talk to you on God's call to prayer warriors. God's call to prayer warriors. In the book of Isaiah chapter 62, verse 7 and 8. Isaiah 62, verse 7 and verse 8. Sorry, verse 6 and 7, not 7 and 8. Verse 6 and 7. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, who shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, and give him no rest till he establish until he make Jerusalem a place in the earth. What is the objective here to establish Jerusalem? The goal, the vision, the desire of God to establish Jerusalem. To make Jerusalem a place in the earth. Jerusalem, the city of the great God. The people of God, let them establish in righteousness. Let people praise God for them. Let the nation that surround Jerusalem know that the living God is among them. That's the aim of God. By their righteousness, by their holiness, that is what God wants. Then to do this, he said, I have set watchmen over your walls. They shall be crying. They shall be making mention of you to me. Yea. The Bible says. Yea that make mention of the Lord. Keep not silence. And give him no rest. Give God no rest. Give God. Then my brother. Now the Lord says. Concerning this holiness movement. We should pray. We should pray. He has things to do in this movement. He has things to accomplish in the lives of individuals. We should pray. And so, it seems God has attached himself to prayers. Just as I illustrated before, that without prayer, he is incapacitated. It's like a vehicle that has no tire. It cannot move. God has attached himself. He said, I want to do something in Jerusalem. But prayer warriors, don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone. Hold me fast. Until I accomplish this. I, maybe I have been telling some of you. Pastor. I want you to do this. Or maybe I want you to come to my place. I want you to hold this program. I want. I say, keep reminding me. Keep reminding me. I can't forget. So God is saying, keep reminding me in the language of man. Keep telling me about it. Keep praying about it. That is what. God is telling us why is God saying so one of the attributes of God is answer to prayers one of the attributes of God if we cease praying he, one of his attributes will be, will be useless and God will not wonder it. that's why he binds himself to us with prayers. Look at it in the book of Psalm 65 verse 2. Psalm 65 verse 2. Oh thou that hearest prayer. Unto thee 
shall all flesh come can you not see why we must pray why do ministries fall why do organizations and churches and all fall why do ministers fall they don't pray they are not praying but because God is a God that answered prayers how long have you stood before him in prayer in that matter have you organized prayer concerning that matter have you taken fasting and prayer concerning that matter God so loves us that he revealed this his attribute to us he so loved us that he revealed this is attributes to us oh thou that hearest prayers unto thee shall all flesh come can you recite that scripture will God hear our prayers here yes. have we come for vain labor vain service have we come for that the people that come for that offer vain prayers he has told you about them he told you about the people who offer vain prayers he told you the characteristics of those people see it in the book of uh, uh, James he was telling us he told us so clearly why they cannot get in verse chapter 4 verse 1 to verse 3 in fact 1 to verse 4 from whence come woes and fightings among you come they not hence even of the lust of your lust that woe in your members desires that fill your heart ye lust that ye desire and have not ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain ye fight and woe ye have not because ye ask not instead of going to prayer you're rather going to carnal things. You're rather contending. Just imagine somebody. God, I want you to make me prominent in holiness revival movement. God, I want you to make me preach in one of the services and conferences. Let them know that I have your power. Then go and pray. Take time. That's your desire. Actually, that's the desire, not even prayer. You're desiring this thing. Take it to God in prayer. Rather than following some carnal means, I know if I can do like this, I know if I can. That's carnality it will not work as long as God is the one that chooses the people to do this to do that he will never choose you because your mythos are carnal the steps you are taking are carnal the imagination of your heart is carnal so you have not taken time to ask it of God you have not taken time where was David when they were chosen king was David among the people in the wilderness but his heart had registered with God in prayer. And when the time came, they waited for him to come back from the wilderness. Settle it with God. Then you will see it in the reality. It shall open. Because faith is first a substance. Then it becomes a reality. So, and again he says, Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your loss talking about some people who are able to pray but still don't have because they are still carnal what they are looking for is to promote themselves is to promote themselves is to advance themselves that's all they are looking for and your prayer is carnal so I cannot answer you so I cannot answer you and it says ye adulterous and adulteresses know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God ah they are still worldly these people are still worldly so where, where asking God for anything you can't find it you are worldly your heart is not in God a double minded man is unstable in all his ways and let not that man think that he shall have anything in the heart from God. Apart from just telling us this, he tells us also in Matthew chapter 6, he's telling us reasons why some people's prayers are not being answered. 
reasons why from people's prayers and not answer from verse 5 and when, he, when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men verily I say unto you that they have their reward but thou when thou prayest enter down into thy closet and when thou hast shut thy door pray to thy father which is in secret and thy father who see it in secret shall reward thee openly but when ye pray use not vain repetitions as the hidden do for the thing that they shall be hard for their much speaking be not ye therefore like unto them for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him amen is telling people who don't receive why vain repeaters they make vain repetitions you are here your mind is not with god let us pray you are saying something over and over sometimes you it's just like um you you, you hook up it's like something just hooked up and it's standing still there what's happening it has hooked up the image is standing still it has hooked up it's not moving again you hook up or maybe in tongues let us pray that god should do this let us now pray that god should do this you are hooked up same repetitions your heart is not in that business you're not serious you're making vain repetitions how will god hear you you're not making progress in prayer because your thought is not there these are the people who don't receive these are the people who don't receive anything from god because they are vain repeaters they're not developing they're not bringing they're not thinking they are, they set their machines they are praying like a machine that is just repeating words repeating words they are not living beings a particular young man wrote his prayers on the wall and anytime he was to sleep he said god just as is written on the wall there he goes to sleep. To him he has prayed. These are the prayer books they give to people. Read them. Date prayers. Date prayers. Your mind is not imagining things. It's just like you're talking with somebody. And your mind is not there. You talk, yesterday when I went there. Yesterday when I went there. Yesterday when... Hey, what happened? When you went there, what happened? Yesterday when I went there. Hey, then what happened? Yesterday. Is that my own full senses? Is it the type of prayer that will receive answers from God? Be conscious of your prayer. Pray with consciousness. Pray. Talk sensibly. You are talking to an individual. The supreme God. Although he knows what is in your heart. As the father of the prodigal son perceived where the son returned home nevertheless say out to your father ask for forgiveness verbally open your mouth and say it although God knows what is in your heart nonetheless say it out with your mouth that is what I'm saying in Jesus mighty name so I'm saying God's call to prayer warriors prayer warriors in the book of first samuel chapter 1 verse 27 and 28 first samuel chapter 1 verse 27 and 28 the bible tells us here saying for this child i prayed and the lord had given me my petition which i asked of him therefore also i have lent him to the lord as long as he lived he shall be lent to the lord and he worshiped the lord there you get that this child i prayed for god to get a woman that prayed in a prophet prayed into life a prophet he called her by special circumstance 
some special circumstances are the call of God to you to become a warrior. Some hard circumstances, some challenges in your life are special calls that God has for you to become a warrior. Look at her. God wanted a prophet for Israel. And as I have told you, he attaches himself to prayer. Who will pray this prophet to life? This movement, holiness revival movement, is when we go to heaven, you will understand. There are people that have been praying for this movement. They have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for a movement like this to come up. That's why it came up now. Is it that God doesn't want revival in end time? He wants, but he attaches himself to prayer. He attaches himself to prayer. So, he had to give special circumstance to this woman. She was barren. For what reason? See this righteous woman. See the way her, her, her maid treated her. See her reaction. She didn't fight them. She didn't abuse that woman. But Rachel, but what happened that she could not give birth? For the Lord had withhold her. Why? The Lord wanted a prayer warrior that this circumstance shall keep you always praying i don't do you wait for a bad dream to call you into prayer when attacks are coming from bad dreams then you know how to pray in the night <laughs> yes when money just just dry from your hand you turn this way no money you turn that way no money is then you see, you can know that god has called you to prayer when some biting sickness comes over your body is then you now know God has called you to prayer and say my brother my, my son take that challenge to me and, and get that out and when you get that challenge out you have gotten double honor not only for that challenge any other thing that will come let this come up you will now speak like the prophet the Lord my God is with me. Who is he that is against me? Let him stand up. Let's come together for judgment. You have gotten boldness now. So, in the book of First Samuel again. Rather, let's go to the book of um, Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Talking about call to prayer from verse 21 to 28 call God's call to prayer Luke chapter 2 verse 21 the Bible says and when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child his name was called Jesus which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb and when the days of a purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord every meal that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons and behold there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took him him up in his arms and blessed God and said everybody 29 and 29 downward want to go Lord now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word for mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all the people a light to the lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. This man, the Lord 
sanctified him to pray for Jesus to come alive. God sanctified this man, consecrated this man as a prayer warrior for the light to come into the world. He prayed until that time. And now when he has seen it, he said, Now Lord, let your servant now depart in peace. I have done my work. By the help of the Holy Ghost, the light has come in. A light to your people and a light to lighten the Gentiles. So, not only himself. In verse 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Esa. She was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And, they, and she coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Can you see? God consecrated a man, consecrated a woman. It may not be just these two. These were the ones that were privileged to come into the temple by the Holy Ghost to see the result of their prayers. Others were still there that never came up. Some mothers would even have died. All praying. What am I saying, brother? My sister, who shall hear this? Listen, God is raising up, is, is raising up prayer warriors Amen. that will pray in the rapture. And God is using these prayer warriors to be able to make the church the bride of Christ pure, holy, and undefiled. Epaphras who is one of you saluted you always laboring fervently for you that ye may stand perfect in all the will of God God is raising up people like that to sanctify the church purify the church to bring in last harvest into the church for other sheep have fire also which are not of this fall them also I must bring that they may be one fold having one shepherd so this is the work he requires watch me to accomplish for him do you now know your calling do you know why what what Mordecai told Esther do you know the reason why you have come to the throne at this time? Do you know the reason why when selection was made, it was you that became the queen? Do you now know why God called you to Holiness Survivor Movement? A movement meant to bring usher in Christ the King in the rapture. And so, to prepare his bride. Get the last harvest into it. Get the bride prepared for the bridegroom and the Lord trusts you and say come walk in my movement what a privilege what a confidence is having on you that God created you for this purpose you are the ass tight that will march the Savior into Jerusalem Amen. what a glory among other asses what a joy what a calling so this is divine calling to your life. The world is really dark. The world is really dark. Sinners and sins are filled everywhere. And Elijah has to walk. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. Verse 41 to 45. And Elijah said unto Ahab. Get thee up. Eat and drink. For there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of the cam of camel. And he cast himself down upon the earth. And put his face between his knees. And said to his servant, Go up now. Look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There's nothing. And he said, Go up again. Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold. 
there arises a little cloud out of the she like a man's hand and he said go up say unto Ahab prepare thy chariot get thee down that the rain stop thee not and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel are you seeing what I'm saying you have told the people as Elijah said to Ahab they, you go and eat and drink the sound of abundance of rain the rain that has not been there for three and a half years is coming now go you have told people come to holiness movement the Lord has raised up holiness movement to bring revival righteousness holiness to the land to Christianity to bring in harvest of souls you have announced that it can only be accomplished by prayer actually you have spoken by the will of God because that's actually what God raised up holiness movement for but we must go to the mountain that's climb up the mountain not a physical mountain in this case I mean climb up go and cast yourself down go into prayer and fasting this thing we're doing should not be only once it's not only national do it in your state do it everywhere every in every country it should be organized holiness revival movement should fast and pray regularly because if we want the blessing as we have promised the people as we, let me use the word as we have boasted before the people we must justify it by prayer Go and pray. And that's why we're here. Not for laziness. We're not here for you to sleep. We're not here. Those that sleep, sleep on their bed at home. Not those who, not soldiers who are chosen to go for war. You're going to be sleeping there? No, not at all. So, that is it. It's a call to bring about the last day revival. That's why you're here. Let's pray that God would do the movement and any other niche, I mean, instrument that he will use to bring about this last day's revival for actually for three and a half years the earth has been dry for a long time the Christianity is lost the church is dry for a long time we are praying in righteousness when righteousness come all these religions making noise they will bow by themselves the reason why they are strong now, we are in a balance if we get weak they get strong if we become strong they will go down it's automatic it's automatic let us become strong and fervent let Christianity spring up automatically Islamic power will bow by itself naturally powers of occultism in the nation will just bow naturally because the voices praying will increase the righteous voices will increase. More energy shall be released. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's automatic. Let us rise up. Let Christianity recover now. You will see naturally the enemy will flee. So, God's call. Now, what about God's promises? God's promises to the prayer warriors. God's promises. In Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. The Bible tells us here saying, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then, shall ye call upon me and, and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you can you see God's promise for you can you see God's promise for us can you see God's promise for the prayer warrior I know the thoughts but these thoughts will not materialize I know what I want you to become but it can never happen I know what I want you to do I know the greater works actually you can come accomplish as my interest is there but it will not happen if you want it to happen then shall ye call upon me when ye shall go meaning go and go go and do this which means a positive action well directed action prepared action when ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hack him when ye shall call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you that's promise 
then what will happen my thoughts shall be unveiled practically in your life my thoughts shall be unveiled practically in your homes practically in your ministry practically among you practically in holiness movement what are the thoughts thoughts of peace peace stands for anything righteousness prosperity victory advancement establishment because what did the angels shout when they were rejoicing for christ coming to the earth he said glory to god in the highest and among men peace and goodwill towards men or sum up the virtues of the gospel the blessings of the gospel to peace so god says thoughts to give you fullness strength advancement victory establishment prosperity power healing miracles these will be established this will come to pass queen you go you call upon me you go to pray for me you, you came here now for prayer that's what god means then there are things that god has been thinking now they're going to manifestation because we have come for prayer not for any other thing we have come for prayer thank god even with fasting so you see the promises of god for us in chapter 33 of jeremiah verse 3 jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 he said call unto me and i will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not great and mighty things you wish to know things you wish to know great things you may wish to know mighty things you can know them by prayer satan is doing his own satan is raising up his people satan is raising up his agents among you they satan is already bringing out his tactics he has worked in other churches and movement to silence them he would have already begun in holiness movement ask me call on me i will open your eyes to see things that you didn't know happening already among you i will open your eyes to see individuals personalities that you will be surprised i say god even this uh -uh, i will open your eyes I'll open your eyes to I'm going to give you revelations and dreams concerning the future how the future will look like I will guide you with my eye I will direct you when you know you will know how to compose yourself so that's promise ask God we don't want this movement to die for God himself said it shall not die it shall not die it is mentioned prophetically the ark of noah it is mentioned the last mercy of god to mankind it is mentioned various ways and god understands what are these things but we want to say we will not allow this to die we will not allow this to die this movement must stand in the name of jesus christ it's a joy what god is doing people are breathing breathing a, a messiah relief all over the world in churches and nations of the world of what god has begun to do in holiness movement he will do it to the end Amen. so that's the prayer that's the promise that god is given to us look at it in matthew chapter 18 matthew chapter 18 verse 18 to verse 20 it tells us here saying verily i say unto you whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven again i say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven for where two or three are gathered in my name there am i in the midst of them whatever you buy forces of darkness 
he will the lord will bind on earth every disobedience we have the power to revenge it that's what the lord says ye shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you and light shall shine in your ways whatever I, truly truly i'm saying to you if two of you shall agree as touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done for them by my father which is in heaven and see righteous people here and the bible says the prayer of the righteous is his delight if these people whose prayers are delight i will group them two and two go and ask the lord go and pray to the lord tell him anything the lord say if you agree it shall be done then it means joy will enter into this world Amen. relief will enter into the churches of christ Amen. judgment will go will flood the kingdom of darkness Amen. anointing shall come to the ministers of the gospel Amen. why in answer to prayers in answer to prayers in answer to prayers amen, amen. so these are promises that god is giving to us whatever you buy and wherever two of you are in my name there i am also in their midst james chapter 5 james chapter 5 the bible tells us there the promise for answered prayers promise god's promises to prayer warriors let's read from verse is any among you afflicted let him pray is any merry let him sing psalms is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray for him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the lord shall raise him up and if he have committed sins they shall be forgiven him confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much can you see we pray one for another and we shall be healed healed from backsliding healed from sicknesses healed from poverty healed from anything afflicting your life healing one for another there are people who have been carrying sicknesses for a long time and these sicknesses are leading them to death it's prayer that will deliver them it's prayer that will deliver them that's what we're talking about god says pray i will heal your brother pray i will heal your sister pray i will do this i will do that many people have been many homes have been rendered barren by the devil many homes have been rendered sick spending their money on sickness by the devil many homes pass through some various strange attacks many individuals have even been stayed from marrying by the devil many other things pray i will heal you effectual prayer fervent prayer of a righteous man heals so many people Availeth much performs a lot of miracles as we come here and we pray for our afflicted brethren healing will follow Amen. i say healing will follow Amen. i say healing will follow Amen. That is what you should have in your mind. And that is the promise that God has. Yes. Ezekiel. Chapter 36. Ezekiel. Chapter 36 verse 25. To 28. The Bible says. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. And ye shall be clean from all your filthiness And from all your idols. I will, will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will make, I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Verse thirty-seven. Let me read verse twenty-nine again. 
amputated. And I will also save you from all your uncleannesses. And I will call for the corn and will increase it. And lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree. And the increase of the field. That ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the hidden. Then verse 37. Thus saith the Lord God. I will yet for this. Be inquired of by the house of Israel. To do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flaw. Listen. Envy and jealousy is common among Christians and Christian ministers. Nobody envies the rich man more than the rich man. Because he doesn't want anybody to come around him. He should be the only one. So that the whole, all people should know that he's the only one here. They should all come and bow before him. That is it. See it and lose it. Envy and jealousy. It kills the righteous. It burns through the heart of the righteous. It defiles the righteousness of the righteous. Envy. A story was told that Satan sent his demons after a righteous man to go and tempt that man to sin. They tried all ways round. The man could not fall. They used immorality. They used money. They used this. They used that. The man never fall, fell. Then they came back to Satan and said, Sir, that man is righteous. We did everything we know how. If the man never fell, Satan said, Follow me. Let's go back to that same man. Follow me. Then when they went to the man, Satan whispered into the ear of that man. Do you know that your friend has been made the bishop of this church in America? Say, what do you mean? What does he know? What does he know that he should be made bishop? They're making any people bishop anyhow. What? 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 What, 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 what does he know? Satan say? Are you hearing? Are you hearing? Envy is the truth. Envy works to pull down and defile the righteous man. And the Lord says, a new heart will I give you. A new heart. If we don't want if your closing eyes is disturbing, just but it's disturbing me. The things I don't know who you are. You were sleeping before. I don't know whether you're sleeping or not. But if you're free, don't worry. So a new heart. So that envy and jealousy will not be there. Your brother is performing. Instead of you rejoicing together, no, your heart is not me. Why are they why are they promoting him? Why in fact why is he always himself? Well, this is defilement. This is the fact. But it wears up by itself because of the nature of heart you possess. It rules, it rules you. It sits there. It's stronger than your ability to manage. It's stronger. God says, I will root it out. Amen. So, but you have to ask me. It's not only in your life. Other people around the world. Holiness movement. If we want purification of heart, let's cry to God. Then our hearts will be original. We will think towards another with original mind. If a brother has a gift, all of us will gather around to promote him. Footballers demonstrating mechanically. When a particular person scores the ball, and the other one's running away and say, hey, he's going to get the glory. They run to him and cover him. Is that also? He, our team is the one winning. Our team, your good performance gives glory to our team and makes us happy that we belong to the team. But righteous people, do you think like that? Do you count those who are gifted as a blessing to you? That, oh, bless God, it is a blessing to this movement. I am of this movement. God says, I will take away this stony heart. This stubborn heart. You know, there's some of you that inside your heart, there is no genuine respect for leadership. Genuine respect. Who is he? Who, why is he even the one doing everything? It's, it's going on in your thoughts. Real honor, respect, appreciation for your brother, for your leader is not there. Actually, it's not there. Although you won't show it in the face, does not God see? Does he not see the imperfections? Is it holiness in the mouth? These people draw it near to me with their mouths and with their lips.
but their heart is far away from me. Oh God, hear prayers. Let original righteousness come upon our lives that our thoughts towards one another should be like angels. For John said, he that has the bride is the bridegroom. I am just a friend of the bridegroom. And the friend of the bridegroom rejoiced at the voice of the bridegroom. That whoever has the grace, you are a friend to him. And you, you will be rejoicing that he has the grace. That is how life should be. Say, so, ye shall ask me. Then I will take away this stony heart from you. I take it away from your people, your children, your brothers, all over and make this movement unique where righteousness and holiness shall dwell but I will yet for this I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel by watchmen in Israel to do it for the rest by the house of Israel to do it for them what about anger little thing you're angry how are you even treating these people you're leading angry over them oppressing them frowning your face you sit you are, you are, you are, because it's a problem to you it's sickness the anger came by itself even when you are pushing pushing like that it will push your hand back and enter but God says go to prayer I will handle that I will make you free that anger shall not be there again what about lusting lusting after the women Lusting. Your mind just goes and hooks over you, a lady. Hooks over her. You turn like that, they think turn with you. you turn. Do you have you, has mosquitoes troubled you before? <laughs> Apart from mosquitoes, there's this other similar thing in the in the bush, like insects. That that one is worse than mosquitoes. If you are not careful to enter your nose, enter your eyes, it will enter inside the ear. You turn like that, you beat like this, you beat, you get angry with it. That's how loss can grip you. What is happening? Me, I have my wife now. What is it? Uh, they are not hearing. What well, well, uh, yes, not hearing? Go to God in prayer. God will root out that. Where should they bring you to shame? Where should you be hypocritical in your life? Where should you be incomplete? Where should you be leprous? Take it to God in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs and our pains to bear. What a privilege to, to carry everything to God in prayer. What about a lying tongue? Exaggerating lips. You, you don't know how it happens. What about fear? You just feel threatened. You are afraid. Why, why am I afraid? The nature of your heart. Take it to God in prayer. Take it to God in prayer. What about some socially on um, socially on wholesome character? Socially, you are not able to be socially. Uh, you are not performing, and you say, "Why? I'm not performing. I don't know where I'm performing." God will help you. Take it to God in prayer. What about even love and giving? Have to be charitable and be flowing in giving. What about that? Now we say bring your report. What was going on in your heart? Did your heart really agree that you should meet, meet beer your report? Was some wisdom coming up in your mind? You have, you know, if they know how much I have, uh, if they know how much, if they know that I use the money for this, uh, if they know that uh, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, those are the defilements of your life. Why? Wow, the nature of your heart. It's the nature of your heart. You can't do it. Take it to God in prayer. I shall yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel. If you want this holiness, take prayer seriously. If you want it in your life, if you want it in others, prayer. If you want peace in the home, take prayer seriously. So, these are promises the Lord is given unto us what about what doing this work in John chapter 14? I read verse 12 to verse 14. John 
chapter 14 verse 12 to verse 14 the bible tells us here saying verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me the works that i do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because i go unto my father and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will i do that the father may be glorified in the son praise the lord greater works don't you want to improve don't you want gifts of the holy spirit to manifest in your life is prayer what? greater works than this shall he do but he shall ask in my name he shall ask in my name then i shall give it unto him so you can see the promise that god has for us you want to move mountain you, through prayer you can cast move a mountain that is on your way so the promises are very many now we are still going to emphasize on the duty of prayer now that you know the calling divine purpose now the promise you have known now the duty luke chapter 18 verse 1 luke chapter 18 verse 1 the bible tells us here and let's repeat that together now they would rather let's say that together one two go and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to offend the duty of prayer always pray don't offend let's wake up again the weakness is not yours alone we are human beings like you that share in the weakness but we don't allow it we struggle against it we rise up we pray and plead and the lord gives us grace we pray and we plead and the lord gives us grace so that's what i want to say to you let's rise up let's do this work let's pray let's take this prayer as a duty Take it as a duty in your life, in your family, in your ministry, in holiness revival movement. Again, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 15 to 19. Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 15 to 19. Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 15 to 19. The Bible says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power verse 20 which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his right his own right hand in the heavenly places paul was writing to the efficient christian converts he said since we had that you are born again you have accepted jesus we began our duty on you the duty of prayer when are we praying for you we cease not it's a duty we cease not to give thanks that you have come to know jesus we are happy that you have come to know jesus we are making mission of you before god in our prayers that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give you understanding that it should be down on you what it means by walking in christ your understanding should quicken because some people are still dark in their minds that the darkness in your mind should flee away that the light of understanding shall come that you may understand this grace that you have obtained you may understand this calling that you have received 
you may understand what it means by the sacrifice of Jesus. You may understand what it means by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, the ascension of Jesus to heaven, and his intercessory ministry over your life, that you may understand the privileges you have for being Christians. That you might, your heart may understand the full victory that has been won over sin and Satan. We have been praying for you. That's the duty of prayer. Pray without ceasing. The duty of prayer. Colossians again, chapter 4, verse 12. Epaphras. Who is one of you? A servant of Christ saluted you. Always laboring fervently for you in prayers. That ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Can you see? In all, in your marriage, in your business, in your family, in your ministry, in your interactions, in your, in your education, in all things about you, 360 degrees, you might stand perfect. You might not fall in any area. You might not be blameless in any area. Is the duty of prayer. It's not a prayer. It's not one prayer. It's not two. Not one day. It's the duty of prayer. Paul will write to Colossians. I'm praying for you. He will write to Thessalonians. I'm praying for you. He writes to Romans. I'm praying for you. He writes to Corinthians. I'm praying for you. He writes to the Philippians. I'm praying for you. I. It is the duty of prayers. That's what God wants you to know. Take it as a duty so that we should be doing this thing regularly. If leadership forgets, raise it up. I say, sir, remember prayer is our duty. We need to go for prayers. We need to organize prayers. That should be the, your own contribution. Again, we, the Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 23 the bible tells us here saying more of us for me god forbid that i should sin against the lord in ceasing to pray for you but i will teach you the good and the right way do you see samuel attaching sin to not praying for people do you see Samuel re revealing that when you don't pray for the flock, you lead. When you don't pray for the people, you are committing sin. In case if you purposely refuse, you cease, or you become too, you are too lazy that you are not praying for your church. You are too lazy. You are not doing it. Have you not heard that it is a sin? God forbid that you come to the point that you are not praying for people. God forbid that you come to the point you are not praying for holiness movement you are not praying for those members of holiness movement you are not praying for the leaders of holiness movement where the mind of God is you cease from praying for holiness movement God forbid that you will not do that that's what he said what did the apostles say in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 6 verse 4 Acts of Apostles it's a duty it's a duty. Acts of Apostles, chapter 6, verse 4. We are apostles here now. What is our duty? Let's read verse 4 together. One, two, go. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the world. Otherwise, the ministry of the world will not have effect. Otherwise, Someone said, I will pray for you, I will teach you also. Not only pray, I will be teaching you too. Paul, apostles here say, I will, I mean, we will pray for you, we will teach you. Prayer and ministry. Because if we do not pray, it will not have effect. Our ministry will not have effect. Do you know that there are some people that can preach a lot, but they don't pray? They can preach a lot, but they can't pray. Take them to prayer. It's like you have removed a fish from this from the water to the land. He becomes helpless. Completely helpless. Satan has got him at the right point. Silenced him in prayer. Go and preach. Go and preach. But prayer is silence. 
as his prayer is silent he cannot attend to righteousness what subdues the, the, the strange thoughts that come to his mind what subdues them the temptations that come the sight that he sees in the audience that are fighting back at him what overcomes them he's not praying somebody was talking about a prominent evangelist that I know great evangelist in his time but is backsliding off now he said if that this man knew how to pray he would have done a great work in his time he doesn't pray he goes to crusade signs and wonders will happen the blind will see they will rise up and walk the gifts and calling of God anointing you remember our message what is the title <laughs> the difference between anointing and holiness for anointing you were called for it even in sin somewhere Samson was still performing so miracles are happening but prayer forget it he's not able to pray he's not able to pray you wonder how it's a mystery but let not your case don't follow this example don't follow this example give yourself to prayer let us give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the world and let let to know that we who preach need a lot of prayers we who lead need a lot of prayers first timothy chapter 2 first timothy chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 4 I exhort therefore that first of all supplications and prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth in case you are already saying, hey, our, leaders, our, our leader has started making a mistake. There is a voice asking you, how many times have you prayed for him? How many times did you fast? When you saw that the mistake was becoming prominent, how many times did you take it to God in fasting? Do you have right to complain? Who among you is more righteous? The leader in his mistakes or you? That is the question. Because the Bible says, I exhort first of all the supplications and prayers. It will wipe away backbiting and gossip. Because if you can pray, we may lead a quiet and peaceable life with all godliness and honesty. The grace will come from God. Let us pray and see whether you will find any people here disagreeing with themselves, fighting themselves. Whether you find people are not seeing eye to eye, the powers of those things will be broken. There will be peace. Leadership means prayer. That's why in Ephesians chapter 6, I read verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 to 20. Pray always with all prayer, a duty and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all sins and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which also for which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak listen to me my brethren Pray for me that utterance may be given unto me. When we came in here, for you who were here first, how many of you were here first? How many of you heard me telling the this uh, our video recorder that they should remove the machine? How many? I didn't have message for today. I didn't plan to preach. It was not in plan. It's as I left here, 
the, my, yes, I received a witness. Move to the room there. Because I was trying to watch the next thing. After this brother finishes the choruses now, what will be the next thing? God, what will be the next thing? I had an impression. Move to the room there. I moved. They said, uh, where? Exhort these people. Oh, is that so? I began to prepare this message. While songs and worship were going on. And I told in 15 minutes, I said, I told the video man, in 15 minutes I will be taking over the pulpit, get the, bring back the video. Are you getting it now? Right. Why? Because although I thought I may be casual in the exhortation, I have learned by experience that if I stand to speak, it is not casual. Yes. Let no people come and blame me. That, huh? Where is this message not recorded? That's why they brought back this video now. Pray that utterance may be given to me. Amen. It's God that gives the utterance. As, as you see the word going clearly from scripture to scripture to scripture, even I myself am wondering. This great revelation the Lord is bringing. See, eh? Has he not told you that it's not him? I am the one that puts my word in his mouth. Therefore, you have to pray. Pray for me also. Pray for the leadership. That this work will prosper. If the Lord said he has chosen me for this work, why not support the God? Support God. Will you envy it? Will you fight against it? You can do nothing but for the truth. Nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Why don't you participate? Now that God has shown you clearly his delight, why don't you go and make God happy? Pray. If my hands are strong in this war, it's for us. Let Moses' hand be strong. The victory will be for Israel. Is that okay? Yes, so my brethren, we have come to pray. Make up your mind that you will pray. Let's rise up upon our feet. Inform yourself. We will pray. We have come for it. We are on the mountain Zion. We have come to worship God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we have had the words. Prayer. The duty of prayer. God give me the grace to pray. Through this period, these three days, the Lord shall anoint our lips in prayer. Anoint our heart in prayer. Put prayer in our mouths to reach out to heaven and bring down his glory and bring down his power and bring down his blessings upon us, upon the movements, upon his work upon the earth. Lord help us, energize us strengthen my heart strengthen my mind in prayer. Every weakness shall be removed. Every weakness shall be removed. Every weakness shall be removed. In the name of Jesus. Every weakness shall be removed. All those things that hinder prayer shall be taken away. Yes, we have come to pray, Lord. Yes, send the fire of prayer upon us. Send the strength of prayer upon us. Send the fire of prayer upon us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the anointing of prayer come down upon our soul. Let the anointing of prayer come down upon our soul. In the name of Jesus. After now we shall not remain the same again. We shall not remain the same again. This fire will keep burning. 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 This fire.
fire will keep burning. This fire that shall not be quenched. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, strengthen my heart in prayer. Yes, take away weaknesses from me. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiry, Contact us on 0813-635-6813 and 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you.